24 International Leadership Summit is knocking on our door. We're officially one week away from the leadership event of the year, and we have a roster jam-packed with culture shifters, dynamic orators, best-selling authors, influencers, government officials, and more who will gather to pour into leaders like you, leaders who are expecting more from their lives, businesses, and ministries. If you haven't registered, do so today and plan to join us here in Dallas, Texas from March 21st through the 23rd. Our special individual and group promotions in this coming Friday, March 15th. Take advantage of our promotions and reserve your seat at thisisils.org. Fortunately, I get the opportunity to listen in on what's going to happen. So I'm telling you, you want to make sure you get to this event, okay? Register right now. It's going to come up periodically through the rest of the service. Scan that QR code and make sure you reserve your seat. You want to be in the room. You want to be at the table so you can know that this is your time and this is your season to make a shift in your family and in your business. Let me get into the Word of God. Uh, 2 Kings chapter number 7. 2 Kings chapter number 7. I want to start at verse number 3. Very familiar passage of scripture, but I want to take my time to try to teach without such excitement, but I'm probably going to get excited today. Starting at verse number 3 from the NASB. Now there were four lepers, men at the entrance of the gate. And they said one to another, why do we sit here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we will die there. And if we sit here, we'll die also. Now therefore come, let us go over to the camp of the Armenians. If they spare us, we will live. And if they kill us, we will but die. They arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Armenians. And when they came to the outskirts of the camp of the Armenians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the Armenians, the army of the Armenians, to hear a sound of chariots and the sound of horses, even the sound of a great army. So that they said one to another, behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Therefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. When these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent and ate and drank and carried from them silver and gold and clothes and went and hid them. And they returned and entered to another tent and carried with them their also and went and hid them. Verse number nine. Then they said one to another, we are not doing right. This day is the day of good news, but we're keeping silent. If we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Therefore, come, let us go to the king's household. I wanna talk from this particular subject while I have your attention. An unusual strategy. An unusual strategy. It's, it's, it's an unusual strategy. You can take your seats. We're going to be in school for just one second. An unusual strategy. That word unusual is unique all by itself. I looked at the word unusual. It means not common. It means not ordinary, it means uncommon. If, if, if I wanted to pause for one second and try to get you excited and let you know that God's about to do something uncommon in your life. But he's gonna use a strategy that might bother you. See, I'm okay when we shout about what God is gonna do for us. The problem happens when God, how God is going to do it. Because if we wanted to shout, if I could tell you, God's about to turn things in your favor. We spend so much time worrying about the vision that we don't talk about the route. See, the vision is what we get excited about. 
but the route prepares us for the vision. So when I tell you God's about to work an unusual strategy, it may not make sense what God's getting ready to do. And it may not make sense who's God getting ready to use. But I'm going to declare right now today, God is going to use somebody in the next seven days of your life that's going to bless you and you're not going to see it coming. Okay, okay, okay. It's important, it's important. It's important, it's important that we open with declarations. It's important because God uses something that is unusual. Remember, I told you it's an unusual strategy because it doesn't make sense that we started with four lepers, but the story doesn't start with four lepers. The Bible says there's a famine in the land. <sighs> that means there's seasons of lack, which means they don't have. As a matter of fact, the famine is so bad that at the latter part of chapter number six, the Bible talks about them performing cannibalism, which means they're eating themselves just to survive. Now I know to yourself, that's, oh, that sounds so gruesome. That sounds so horrible. That sounds so repulsive. But I got a question for you today. I believe today that we are eating each other alive just to get ahead. We may not be performing fleshly cannibalism, but I got a question I need to ask you. Why do you feel you got to step on people to be elevated? <sighs> See, I know you're not eating the baby, but you're eating my future. Because you feel you got to step on me so you can be elevated. My question to you today may be rhetorical, but do you think you grow taller by stepping on people? So let's juxtaposition the cannibalism that happened then that may be happening right now. Who have you devoured to get ahead? Because <laughs> the Bible says they're cannibalizing each other just to survive. What are you doing to survive? I'm going to date myself, and some of you may know, some of you may not know, but there used to be a song that says, what people do for money. What have you done just to feel as though you could get ahead in life and say that God blessed you from that? <sighs> we got to be careful that we're not performing cannibalism and calling it spiritual growth. Oh, because we're doing whatever it takes to get ahead because the truth is we're trying to survive. We're trying to do whatever it takes and the Bible says that they're performing cannibalism and it sounds repulsive, but church, I'm afraid we're doing the same thing today. So now they're performing cannibalism, there's a famine in the land and all of a sudden in the middle of a mess, there is a declaration. Hmm. Chapter 6 ends with them killing each other. Verse number 1 says, a man of God shows up and says, the famine is over. Okay, 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 I'm going to come get you in a minute. Uh, the Bible says they're in the middle of a mess, but God gives a specific instructions in the middle of a mess. Okay, 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 okay. In the middle of everything that's happening, God speaks. <laughs> it would appear to me that God you could have spoke before this happened why did you let me get in the middle of it and then you want to talk to me do I have anybody in here that God waited till you got in the middle of it and then he wanted to talk to you he waited until everything was going crazy and then he says you're going to be alright no 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 you could have stopped it in the beginning God speaks in the middle of a mess. In the middle of what you're going through, God intervenes with the word. And the man of God says, by this time tomorrow, I don't know who this is for today, but the Lord I serve said about this time tomorrow, Things are about to turn in your favor. Okay, okay, 
Okay. Somebody online, somebody in the house, shout favor. Somebody shout favor. Ooh. Here is an indication that God is turning in your favor. Because in verse number one, there's a declaration. In verse number two, there's a doubter. Anytime God gives you a word, expect somebody to fight what God told you. Okay, 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 uh -huh. okay, okay. The text says by this time tomorrow, things are about to turn around. But in verse number two, there's a man said, unless God come down from heaven and do it himself, this thing gonna happen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the devil didn't even wait until tomorrow. He spoke right after God spoke. <laughs> in other words, he didn't even let God's words take root because he wanted to get it before it started germinating. And somebody better hear me today. You got a word from God, but the devil is fighting everything that God says I'm gonna do in your life. But baby, this is an indication that things are turning in my favor. He'll send doubters. The text says there's a doubter. Oh, but check this out. The declaration is birthed with unrealistic timelines. Because the doubter says there's no way this could happen tomorrow. Catch this. This is why you better be careful who's in your circle. <laughs> Baby, because if God tells me this thing can be done in less than 24 hours, if you can't go with me and believe like I believe, I'll come back and get you later. But as for me and my house, we gonna believe God and what he says get ready to turn in my favor. Somebody shout favor. The text, the text is clear because he says about this time tomorrow, about this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow. Not tomorrow, by this time tomorrow. Which means it can happen between I spoke it and 24 hours. Uh, but guess this, uh, the season of announcement is not always the season of fulfillment. <laughs> let, me, let, let me come and get you. Sometimes we believe when we announce it, it's supposed to happen immediately. But sometimes God says, I'm going to do something unique that what I just told you is not meant to bless you. It's meant to bless everybody around you. Check this. Somebody just shout, do it, God. Okay, he says, I'm going to do it. But what he says is, I want you to announce it so I can do something. But here's where I found that there's a cognitive disconnect in this text. Because you're talking about people eating kids, then there's a declaration that the season is over with, and then he says four lepers. Okay, wait, what? What? Four lepers. What four dysfunctional people got to do with my deliverance? <laughs> The Bible says, he declares the famine is over, he deals with the doubter, and then he starts talking about four lepers. Four, four lepers, four people that's outcast, talked about, cannot be used, and has a desire just to be fed. And the Bible says, they say to themselves, why sit here? until we die. Come, 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 come here, let me ask you this question. Why didn't they ask this question earlier? They're on the brink of starving. They could have asked this question a long time ago. Is it possible that God is waiting on you to declare some things? 
before he starts setting other things in motion that you don't even see working in your favor. See, here's, here's what we get aggravated. Here's what we get aggravated. Uh, Dr. Tuttman, we get aggravated because we want God to do it how we think he should do it. God, didn't you say the famine is over? He said, I told you it's over. But I did not tell you the strategy I was going to use to get you out of it. Don't ever confuse God's silence as abandonment. God does not address them about the famine anymore. The Bible says, he says it's over and he starts dealing with some dysfunctional people. Okay, 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 wait a minute. Uh, he tells the people of God that your famine is over. And then he goes to talk about some dysfunctional people. Okay, okay, okay. So God will use dysfunctional people to start the process. Okay, okay. The text says, why sit here until we die? Why, why, why are we right here? Now, I, I, I got a question. Is this a question or a statement? Huh. Which means that this question or this statement is pregnant with potential. They ask the question, why sit we here till we die as though we ain't got no business here? What? We ain't got no business. Can I talk to at least 10 people? You ever been in the season of your life? And you said, I ain't got no business here. I ain't got no business with arguing with foolish people. I ain't got no business with arguing, giving energy to people who can't even thrust me into my future. We have no business here. The question is pregnant with the potential that they have. Why, why are we here? And then they do something that most of us don't do, self-evaluation. A self-assessment of where we are right now. They say, listen, if we sit here, we gonna die. If we go back into the city, we gonna die. But the potential is ahead of me. Uh, catch this, if we go back in the city, can I use that as representation? Which means we gotta go in the past. If I go back to my past, I'm gonna die. Okay, okay, okay. If I go, if I go back to the way I used to be, I'm gonna die. But I wanna talk reality to at least 10 people in here and 100 online. I wrestle with who I used to be. Okay, 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 okay. I told you at least 10 people that's gonna tell the truth. Now, if you've been born holy, God bless you, I'm not talking to you. But a few of us, every now and then, somebody crossed the wrong path, baby, it's still living in there. It's like, okay, all right, all right, all right, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost to sit on me. I need, I need him right there, sit, sit on me right there. Somebody shout, sit on me. I need, I need him to sit on me. Every now and then, I have the potential of going back to who I used to be if it had not been for the name of... This is maybe one of the problems with some things in the church. Everybody want to live, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> uh oh, I might be old school right about here. I need you to die to your old way of thinking. I need you to die to your flesh. I need you to die to your responding. I was in there the other day and I stuck myself. Somebody said something to me. And they said something to me, and it didn't bother me. And then they said it to my wife. Every ooh just felt what I felt. Because <laughs> when you said it to me, I was cool. But you said it to my wife, I was like. And my wife said this to me. I ain't need her to be holy. Now, she said, Pastor. 
Pastor, I said, hey, my boss, shut up. Here's what, temperature rising. And I know what's getting ready to happen. And the Lord, catch this, I got in the car. And I said, Lord, why did I do that? He said, because I want to show you what's in you that needs to die. I know, I know, I know this may not be a famous message for some of you, but God says before I elevate you, your past got to die. Your dead way of thinking has to die. Your old way of doing stuff has to die. The responding to other stuff has to die. I wanted to live, he said, but then kill yourself. Ooh, yourself, I said, what? He said, your selfish way of thinking. I said, God, but he said that to my wife. He says, I know, but he said it to my daughter. I said, oh my God, oh my God. He said, you worried about the wrong thing. He says, I'm worried about making you. You worried about revenge. He said, but I'm trying to make you to evolve to kill the old you. So why sit here till you die? I thought sitting there was topography. I did not realize sometimes sitting there can be emotionally. Some of you, God to help me right here. Some of you are still sitting in the breakup. Some of you are still sitting in the divorce. Baby, you got too much life to live. It happened, it's over with. They gone, bye bye, see you later. Sometimes you ought to be happy they left. Okay, I'm, okay, 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 okay. Why? Sit there till you die. Catch this. He says, uh, if we go backwards and I'll pass, we gon' die. If we sit here, we gon' die. Let me pause right there if I can. Which literally means you have options. So contrary to popular belief, when he said you can't make it without him, you got options. I don't care what the devil says, you got options. And if I'm only talking to about 50 people right about here, somebody shout, I have options. <laughs> Here's the thing, options are available, but can you recognize them? And do a self-awareness test to find out where am I supposed to be going? Because if I take the past with me, I'm gonna die. If I sit in the same place, I'm gonna be mediocre. And I'm gonna die here. And I'm gonna, I'm, y'all, please forgive me. I'm allergic. I sneeze every time mediocrity comes around. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, they say, what's wrong with you? I, I feel mediocre. I, you don't want nothing in your life. I pray for you. Come, let's have a good time. I pray the next time you go on a date that the Lord make you sneeze. If they not meant for your potential. No, no, that ain't the one. Should I look for another? That ain't the one. Should I, should I look for another? I pray that God gives you a sign and it ain't the pepper. Oh, should I look? <laughs> look at me online. We just having fun. But I do pray that God gives you a sign so you don't waste your time with somebody who wants to move backwards when you're trying to move forward. The text says, I have, I have options. Why sit here till we die? Why stay in 2016 till you die? Why stay under the attack of the enemy until you die when you have potential? But can I please bring some highlight out of the text of something I found absolutely wonderful? The Bible says, they said to themselves, why sit we here till we die? Uh, which means they refuse to go alone. <laughs> I want to be around friends that even if I'm not in the room, you still call my name. I want to be around people. I want people in my life that baby, when you eat, 
we all eat. I want to be around saints in my life that says, I sent something, baby. We need to pray about something. See, I know we, we may be antiquated right about there, but I'm looking for some seasoned mothers and some seasoned fathers that say, I sent something in your life. Baby, let me pray for you right there, right, right there. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening, but let's pray. That's the power of the right partnership. He says, uh, we can't sit here because we crazy. And uh, we might as well get up because we ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> we might as well get up because uh, we've been here long enough. Uh, isn't it funny? Uh, clarity works best sometimes when you have options. When you have no other way to turn. Isn't it funny that's how God does things? He'll take away all your options. And then you start saying, I trust you, God. Do I have any witnesses in this house or online that it seems like God took everything away from you? And then he says, now you can pray better. Now you can believe better. God says, now, 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 now I can use you because all your options have been taken away. And he says, here, here's what I want to do. He says, oh, you can't go backwards. You can't stay there. You got to move forward. You got to move forward because I want y'all to go in the right direction. Uh, I want y'all to follow each other. There is nothing more frustrating than trying to follow a parked car. You got the green light to move, but friends around you say, nah, I don't want to go nowhere yet. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Fellas, I'm probably gonna get in trouble right here. But uh, if you're gonna marry the right woman, you better keep it moving, brother. Okay, because I know we celebrating women right now in this month, and they on something different right now. They entrepreneurs, they're moving. They saying, listen, I ain't following no parked cars. They say, listen, I got my own car, I got my own house, I, got, I need you to do something in my life. Baby, you gotta bring more than money, because I already got that. I got a car, I already got that too. Matter of fact, I got three on tour room. I'm sorry, I got, I'm, I'm. <laughs> They're not following park cars these days. I just want you to stay in the house. Sure, Paul's okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm not even gonna bother that. I, <laughs> he says, what? He says, no park, no park cars. <laughs> Somebody put in the comment, no park cars. See, you better be moving. You got to, you got to, watch this. I'm going to show you something because there's power in movement. Ooh, there's power in movement because, catch this, uh, the level of the expectation increased because they decided to move forward. The level of expectation increased when they decided, uh, we're not sitting here anymore. And before I move on, I got to give the declaration that God told me to say. He says, I want you to speak life over every relationship to the person that's watching and listening. Okay. Here why, why, why I make this statement. I'm not talking about relationship as in husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. Hear me. I'm talking relationship as in friendship, business partners, those who are assigned to the next level of my life. I'm talking relationship. Those who I relate to, I am praying for healthy relationships. But here, that, <laughs> here, okay, you, you, got, you got to hear this because here's why it's important because it's going to be critical for survival. One thing that uh, my wife and I decided to do, and some of you, marriage is a thumbprint. You may not practice this, do it if you want to. We agree that we both can't be mad at the same time. Can't do it. So the first person to get mad, okay, it's your turn. You can't be mad at the same time. Because we mad at the same time, I don't know what is going to come out of my mouth. Watch this. I need somebody spiritual enough <laughs> to understand when I'm operating in my flesh, but still love me for who I am. And she needs somebody that loves her enough that look past her flaws and still see the ruby that God made. Okay, okay, because it's critical for our survival because if you ever got two people mad at the same time, 
half of the noise y'all making here was two people mad at the same time. <laughs> and then it causes a problem because, catch this, because now it's hard for us to survive because it's critical. And it's, and it's critical because, truth be told, Pastor, I want to be mad. I got a reason to be mad. He did what he did, I should be mad. But the problem is, we can't move mad. How are we doing what God told us to do? And we're mad. And God is saying, I can't move you forward until you stop bowing to emotionalism. Okay, okay. Uh, quick therapy session. Uh, your emotions are indicators, not dictators. <laughs> your emotions will say, okay, I got a problem. I feel me getting angry. Watch this, but I'm not letting it dictate how I move. And the problem with some people, you let your emotions dictate how you move. Then after you got the fruit of your emotions, now you're saying, I'm sorry, I apologize, I won't do it again. No, the greatest apology is change behavior. Somebody shout behavior change. Here's the behavior change. They are not sitting there anymore. They decide, I'm getting out of here. I'm not staying here, I'm moving. I don't care what the devil has in front of me. God says, it's time for me to move forward. Yeah. This. They get up, but I told you there's something prophetic about the movement. The text says, when they got up, they started to move. Uh, Y'all, catch this, you gotta hear me. The Bible says, when they move, God calls a sound. God doesn't move until they move. God does not do anything and says, I'm waiting on you to get up and start walking. I'm waiting on you to get up and bust a move. But, here, but here's what's crazy. The text says, when they move, the Bible says, the Lord caused a sound. Here's why I'm confused. He caused the sound, but everybody couldn't hear it. The only people that could hear the sound was the enemy. Okay. The people in the city couldn't hear the sound. The Bible says as they moved, the army of the Armenians heard chariots, and horses, catch this y'all, and they started to assume that my movement was stronger than the person that's coming. And I wanna talk to somebody today or who may be watching. God says, when you move, you're gonna sound like an army. When you move, you're gonna sound like a thousand people moving. When you decide to step out, Sound affects vision. Sound affects vision. Remember I told you it's critical who you walk with? Because the Bible says four of them walk. <laughs> and as four of them walking, it's the sign of unity. So unity creates an army. And the only person hear the sound is the enemy. And the enemy vision is affected because they assume, okay, okay. Can I prophesy to somebody today that the enemy is going to assume you bigger than you are? Okay, let me really come and get you. Has anybody ever felt like people didn't like you and you don't know why they don't like you? You ain't got half the stuff they got. And you say, baby, you don't like me now. Wait till God move me into my next season. You think you got a problem with me now? Wait till I start walking. Because when I was sitting still, the only person making the sound was me. Okay, okay. Woo. God said this time, when you get up, don't say nothing. Just walk. 
When you walk into the office tomorrow, just start walking. When you walk into the car lot, just start walking. Catch this. Because I got to show you something. This is prophetic. The Bible says the only people here to sound is the enemy. But remember I told you, in the middle of a mess, there's a declaration. And God speaks to four lepers in the middle of a mess. So Israel is starving while God is working. God is working on your answer. And you don't even know it. Okay, somebody shall prove it. I'm going to prove it to you. Uh, if you could do me a favor, could you put verse 5 on the screen? Just put verse 5 on the screen. Verse, verse 5, put, put verse 5 up there so everybody can see. The Bible says, so they got up at twilight to go. Stop right there. They got up at twilight to go. Do me a favor. Put verse 7 up there. Put verse 7 up there. Uh, the Bible says, and they fled at Okay, okay, let me, let me rewind, let me back up again. At verse 5, the Bible says they got up at, in verse 7, the Bible says the enemy moved at, okay, you just, <laughs> they're not even in the same place. God is making your enemy move, and they don't even know why they're moving. <laughs> He's miles away, and God is making an echo sound that the praise I'm doing today, God is allowing the enemy to hear it tomorrow. Baby, so I'm about to bust some moving. Uh, somebody shout, make a move. When you sick, make a move. Dysfunctional, if you tired, if you broke, I'm going to prove it to you. The Bible says uh, they started moving at twilight. I got a problem, Lord, I got a problem. God gives a word in the middle of a mess. He tells me to start moving at dark. And he moves the enemy at dark. Which means you do things when it's inconvenient. God could have easily did it during the daytime. He could have did it where everybody can see it. But God says, this time, I'm going to work in the dark. I'm going to work in the middle of a mess. I'm going to sit back and let you start moving. And you have no idea what's ahead of you. The only thing you're doing is saying, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there again because back there has no potential because back there I'm going to die. But if I move forward, uh, somebody shout, make a move. I don't know who this is for today, but somebody shout, make a move. You've been sitting there too long. Make a move. As a matter of fact, point at your neighbor like they owe you some money and tell them, make a move. <laughs> oh, God. I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. Uh, the text says there's an echo that they hear that feet sounds like chariots. <sighs> Which means my movement is prophetic. <sighs> Somebody better hear me today. You're too busy running after a new car. God says, I need you to learn how to own a car lot. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Catch this. Because the text says, God, I'm just a teacher. The text says, what happens is, only thing they want to do is survive. I might lose you online. I might lose you right here. I might lose you, but stay with me. Stay with me. I might lose you. Uh, uh, Dr. Tutman, uh, help me here. Uh, God doesn't heal them. They still got leprosy. Yes, sir. 
God does everything he's going to do. And he still doesn't heal them. I almost got mad with God. I said, God, you should have healed them. And then let them move to their abundance. He said, then you wouldn't have gave me the right praise. Can I talk to some dysfunctional people in here that you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, baby, you ain't all the way healed, you ain't got it all together, but God has set you in motion that you're starting to say, God, I know you're going to do it in my life. Somebody shout, make a move. But God is going to use a unique strategy. The strategy is simply this. A strategy is a set of maneuvers, a series of maneuvers to get you to your declaration. It's a series of maneuvers. While you're crying, I ain't got nothing to eat. The declaration already said the famine is over. Here's why some parents should have been shouting right here. Because God, God already told you your children were saved. You just got to walk through a series of maneuvers until you see the manifestation of what God says I'm going to do in your life. So the text says, uh, they come to the camp and everybody, okay, can I be ebonic? They come to the camp and everybody, everybody gone. And the first thing they do, y'all, the text say, is they start eating. Okay, okay, okay. This may not be for everybody, but can I high five some hungry people? <laughs> can I high five some hungry people? Can I high five some hungry people? Baby, I'm ready to eat. I know who I'm talking to today, but me and my family, we gonna eat. Why you gonna eat? Cause the table is spread and God is making a table in the presence of my Oh, I wish I had some hungry people up in here that say, baby, I'm getting ready to. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And here's how you know you're hungry. Your insides start making some noise. Oh, this is when you know you're hungry. Your insides start. The text says, the first thing they do is they eat and start grabbing stuff. <laughs> In other words, I ain't thinking about nobody else. I gotta get mine. And the Bible says, I found this strange. And they hide it. They hide it, which says they believe that somebody could come steal it one day. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. Sometimes God can provide enough that you ain't got to hide it. And I want to talk to everybody today that got a gift, but feel like you got to hide it. So the people around you don't feel intimidated. Baby, stop burying your gift to hide it from people who don't even qualify to be in your circle. Okay, 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 okay. I got, I got, I got to get out of here. And the text says, they start eating. They start eating. They didn't go in one tent. The Bible says they got that tent. Or we got another tent. And they start eating again. But here's where the revelation comes where God is working a series of maneuvers. The text says, they said to themselves, we're not doing good. We're not doing good because there's people in the city starving while we have all this abundance. All y'all just shouted. And I'm gonna need you to shout on this too. They thinking about the people that talked about them and threw them out. <laughs> you heard me say it before in this church. Don't tell me you save when you love Jesus. Tell me you save when you love Judas. <laughs> See, don't, 
Don't, don't, don't tell me, oh, I got to bless my family. The Bible says in the midst of them being blessed, they think about the people that threw them out. What if God says, I can't give you the overflow and you start, until you start praying for those that despitefully use you? Oh, <laughs> the text is clear. He says, no, we don't do right. And here's where I think I want to land this plane right here. He said, we don't do right. We got too much. Y'all, he says, now let's go to the king's household. We got to tell the king what has happened. Okay, wait a minute. We got to tell the king what has taken place. Wait a minute, that got leprosy. They're not supposed to have access. They're not supposed to have access to the king. But God says, I will open a door so big for you that is not just meant for you. It's meant for you and the next general. Somebody shout, give me access. He says, I'll give you access if you let me use you. If you let me use you in the same mindset you are right now. Hear me when I say mindset. Everything that happens, God never addressed their leprosy. He never addresses their leprosy and they still get blessed. And they never lift a finger. I want to say this to somebody today. God says, I'm about to repay you for the past suffering that you never told anybody about. I'm about to open the door for you and it's going to be a sweatless victory. I'm about to do something in your life and it may not require you to be healed. They never get heals of leprosy. But God still uses them to answer a prayer from people who don't even like you. What do you do when God calls you out to be the black sheep? And the one that says your decision is tied to somebody's deliverance. Your decision, your, your, your decision, what decision you make today is tied to somebody's deliverance. The move you make. If you sit here, catch this, not only do you die, God's word dies. <sighs> and God said, my word will not return to me. Boy, I will use whoever I decide to use. I'll use leprosy. Pastor, what is leprosy? Do you know people with leprosy back then, they didn't even like being looked at. People despise looking at them. They had to walk around declaring, Leprosy, 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 leprosy. So catch this, in one season I'm hollering what I got, and the next season I'm hollering what I got. I go from hollering leprosy to I have your blessing. I go from hollering famine so now it's time for a feast. But God is using an unusual strategy. He says, this is what I want to do today. And everything you've been going through, every suffering you've been dealing with, every stronghold that's been on your family, every stronghold that's been in your life, God says simply, I've been waiting on you to make a move. 
been waiting on you to stop sitting in the same place. Change your mind. Change how you think. Why sit here in 2024? Why sit here till you die? I'm not talking about literal death. I'm talking about your dreams are dying. Because you're sitting in the wrong environment. Why? I refuse to sit here. Do me a favor. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, I'm taking you with me. <laughs> 